It's a, it's a, gospel, it's a gospel track, sir. To think about. Yeah, it's a, it's a good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, right. Yeah. Um, I, I taught religious education when I was a teacher. Did you? For 30 years. Do you ever think about the afterlife? Uh, well, my wife just died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, she needed to go. She was always complaining, waking up in the morning, saying, why didn't they take me? How old was she? She was 77. That's good age. It's okay. And I'm now 83. What's your name, sir? Pat, I'm, I'm David, and my wife my Gay. Gay. It's nice to meet you, Patrick. I was a bad boy for 22 years. You are a bad boy. From 15 to 37, the drink got a hold of me. I ended up with 13 near-death experiences. In three, Scotland? Here. 13 near-death experiences, three drink drives, and barred from 22 pubs in this area. I'm now 21 years clean because of one prayer in my bedroom through Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. I ended up in Israel two years later, baptised in the River Jordan, and stuck on TV to 60 million people. I'm now an author and published a book of our life. Um, and I say to people when I meet them on the street, Pat, is this, would you consider yourself to be a good person? Would I yeah. consider myself to be? My aims are to be a good person. Yeah. And, uh, and as a teacher, I think... Um, well, let's, they, let's they, see if you're a good person according to God's standard, not man's standard. They play along with me, yeah? God, uh, put um, our lifestyle to the side and what we believe to the side, yeah? But God's going to judge everyone by the same standard, His standard, and His standard is the Ten Commandments. You've heard of the Ten Commandments, yeah? Let's go through three, four, five to see how well you'll do on that day. I'm not judging you or my wife because we broke all ten, yeah? The Ninth Commandment says, Thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not lie. Have you ever told a lie in your life, Pat? Oh, yeah. So have I. What do you call someone who lies? No, no. If I lied to you, what would you call me? Uh, probably a few names. Well, what's the name for someone who lies? I'll make it easy. Well, a liar. A liar. Thank you, sir. The, th the second one, um, the Eighth Commandment says, Thou shalt not steal. Have you ever took anything irrelevant to the value and not give it back in yes, your entire... Yes, cricket ball. Uh, uh, it... What do you call someone who steals? Uh, um, well, it didn't come across many. I, um, if, if, I if I stole something, what would you call me? Thief. Well done. Thank you, sir. It's hard to... To, but th bear with me, bear with me, because this is for your benefit. The third one, have you ever took God's name in vain, OMG, in the name of Jesus, come out of your lips? i done it when I was drinking every other word. We don't even know we're doing it. That's what it means, taking it in vain, yeah? And, now, God will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. It's very serious. It's called blasphemy in the Old Testament. But if I was to take your mum or dad's name, your son or daughter's name, someone you love and was precious to you, and I used their name as a four-letter filth word to express disgust, you'd be offended. How much more offended is God when we use his son's name, Jesus? It's never the false religions, oh, Allah and Buddha and all of us. It's always blasphemy, blaspheming the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah? Two more. Well, I'm not a swearer. Yeah, I, I, I think being a teacher, I tend to set, well, I tried always to set an example. Thank you. But you've done that in the past. Yes. Um, two more. Um, this one got me. The seventh commandment says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. You know what adultery is. If I have an affair, my wife has an affair, that's committing adultery. But I didn't realize there was two ways of committing adultery, Pat. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 and 28, he says, You have heard it said of them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looks at a woman or a man to lust after them, sexual desire, has committed adultery with them already in his heart. Why? Because he's going to judge our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Now I'm a red-blooded male, the same as yourself. We've done that as well. Last one. I thought, you can't get me here. The sixth commandment says, Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not kill. I've never killed anyone, I've never murdered anyone. You can't get me here. I was wrong again, Pat. The thought life. 1 John 3.15 says that whosoever hates his brother has committed murder of the heart, and you know that no murder have eternal life abiding in him. So God sees the thought life. He made the eyes, he made the brain, he knows, here's through the ears. Now, that's five of the ten. Thank you for your patience and thank you for bearing with me and, and being honest, because it takes courage to be that way. It's funny, you know, when you're talking to me like this. Um, I stand here and listen to you, and I understand what you're saying and yeah. what you're attempting to put, pass the message over. It was extremely difficult as a young teacher in yeah. 1966 when I started teaching to encourage 
young people to be aware of what I was saying to them in um, RE lessons. Um, so I, I had to speak, I had to use the language that we would commonly use around the, the town uh, with our friends, with our family and so on. And, and try and come around the subject. Tactful? Huh? Being tactful? Well, not necessarily being tactful, but mm. just trying to use um, daily routines, daily situations mm -hmm. that, that come up, they came across, the youngsters yep. came across every day, yeah. and, to, and to try and get them to understand what I was getting at yeah. in teaching RE, yeah. and trying to get them to believe that there is a better life okay. that they can live. Now, Pat, getting back to the, the commandments, thank you for your patience, but the reason why I'm doing this is because God had mercy upon this sinner, yeah, in bondage to alcohol for 22 years, etc, etc. Now, that's how God's going to judge people, and thank you, that's five of the ten. When I look around here, I see all these people, I think to myself, well, within 50 years, 100 years, we'll all be gone, every one of us. Yeah. And this message is so urgent that i got to give the bad news first to hit the conscience, so that I can give them the good news. Now, if you died today, God forbid, and it's appointed unto men once to die and after the judgment, whether we believe or not, yeah? God will see you now as a lion, thief, an adulterer, a murderer, a blasphemer at heart. If he was to judge you by all ten commandments, would you be innocent or guilty, Pat? Be honest. Um, According to his standard. Oh, well, we couldn't, we couldn't match that no. at all. You'd be guilty, the same as... The rest of us, yeah. Now, how can God? Here's the good news, Pat. How can God let guilty people like us into heaven and at the same time be a good, righteous judge? Although you know this. Over two thousand years ago, He sent His Son Jesus Christ on the cross, God incarnate in His Son. And when He was on that cross, the sinless, holy, perfect Son of God, He laid His life down as a perfect atoning sacrifice, a substitutional atonement and through his holy and precious blood that was shed on the cross to save us from our sins, yeah, to pay the ultimate. Now, it's hard for people to understand and get their head around that, so I'd like to make it easy in layman's terms. Here on earth, we broke the law, lying, stealing, etc. If you break one commandment according to the book of James, whosoever keepeth the whole law of Moses, yet offend in one point, one commandment, he is guilty of all, anyway. Nobody can keep the commandments. On that cross, Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law of Moses. He was the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah? Now, he paid our fine. We broke the law. Jesus paid our fine on that cross through his life's blood. There's two things we must do to enter the kingdom of God. I realize I've been reading the Bible every day for 21 years without fail. The first thing I'd done in my bedroom 21 years ago with tears coming down my face directly to God when I was facing jail for three drink drives, and that was to repent, to say I'm sorry, forgive me, have mercy upon this sinner. I've lied, I've stolen, I've blasphemed, I've broke your commandments, have mercy. Where were you then? In my bedroom, with tears coming down my face after I come out of the courthouse for three drink drives. The judge said to me the second time, David, if I see you here again, that big house up in the hill is where you're going, Horfield Prison. He's seen me again, but this time he let me go. Three strikes and you're out, he let me go. And the reason why he let me go is because four weeks before the court, the yellow pages, the old phone directory, fell off the side. I went to pick it up, Pat, and it opened up at AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. At that point, I realized I had a problem. I needed help. I went into AA for four weeks. I was in 18 months in AA. But when I went before the judge, I met someone in AA said about DHI and Bath, Drug and Homeless Initiative, semi-rehab, two hours, one day a week with like-minded people. So you reached rock bottom. So I, was, I, I got right to the very bottom. And, you know, when I, was, when I was there, basically, I didn't want to live no more. I had enough of this world. I come out of the court, relieved I didn't go to jail. But I came in the front door, I come into the bedroom, I looked up to the ceiling and started shouting, 15 to 37, 22 years of bondage. I was angry at the people I'd hurt. The problem wasn't the world, the problem was me. I needed to change, not the world. 
and I shouted, if there's a God up there, I says, you do for me what I can't do for myself, otherwise you take me out of this world. I'm sick of my life, sick of my family, sick of my so-called friends. I don't trust no one. I've had enough of this world. Now either you change my life or you take me out of this world. I'm sorry. And I burst into a flood of tears. I'm sorry for every single person I've hurt in my entire life and every bad word that's come out of my lips, even towards my family. Please forgive me. Have mercy upon this sinner. Lord Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. I fell on the ground laid there for 20 minutes no miracles no angels no flashing lights but the truth is god seen my heart two years later i ended up in israel baptized in the same river as jesus christ and stuck on tv with 60 million people and i've been doing the same ever since sharing my testimony and sharing the truth of the gospel of jesus christ the two things we must do is to repent directly to god the second thing we got to do and this is the most important part and i'll finish here is to stop trusting in our own good works to save us. I helped that little old lady. I paid money to charity. I done that good work and that good deed. Our good works can't save us. And most religions are works righteousness. You have to do something in order to be saved. Yeah? Stop trusting in our own good works. And instead of trusting it, at the moment you're like a man on a plane. The engine's on fire. The plane's going down. I'm parachute there. Put on the parachute to save you from hitting the ground at 180 mile an hour. And you're, you're saying to me, I'll save myself, I'll flap my arms. That won't work. So transfer our goodness from ourself and trust in our own self to save ourselves. And transfer and put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. The moment we do, God promises, because he cannot lie according to Titus chapter 1 verse 2. Yeah. He will remit our sins past, present and future. He will give us a clean, a new heart and a new spirit called the Holy Spirit. And he will change us from the inside out to let go of our unrighteous ways and to walk in righteousness. The drink's gone, 21 years with me. The smoking's gone, the drugs is gone. God has changed me from the inside out. Even the sugar and my tea's gone. He gave me a wife of 11 years that I did not deserve. And you know, it's his great mercy. Every day's a blessing. I, I don't take for granted what God's given me. Does that make sense to you? Um, yes, what you have said to me, you've been sort of lecturing me. And uh, that's... In my mind, as the a, truth. As a yeah. 30, 30 years of teaching, mm -hmm. that's not the best way to do it. You must allow me to intertwine with you. Two-way conversation. Absolutely, yes. So, that the, in fact, I need to ask questions yeah. and you can answer them or you don't have to answer them. Yeah. But just to continually pour Thank your you. message out. Thank you, Tom. Do you, do you know why I'm like that as well, Tom? I've got a ceiling. I've got a, a pat. Uh, I've got a ceiling compassion for for the lost. Yeah, but I'll tell you another reason why I'm like that, Pat. If you look at my nose, this nostril is blocked. Nine out of ten. This is seven out of ten. I've just been granted my funding after three from 2016 to now, seven years. They turned me down twice for funding for an operation, a septa rhinoplasty, and this week. God's grace has granted that funding and I'm going in for it and I can't wait Tom because I'll be able to Pat sorry please forgive me I'm terrible for names but the thing is I'm going to be able to breathe without without panic attacks can you see my nose you, yeah have you had the same rugby match wow no way <laughs> so and a good big boot you're absolutely correct in what you say, Tom. I've got uh, infected, infected sinuses this side and a half this side, and I can't wait to get it done. I know what you I'll have a new lease of life, and I can use these two years. <laughs> well, good luck in the operation. I'm Thank sure you. you'll come out a bit fine. Now, when would be a good time to get right with your creator? I mean, when are you going to die? Well, it's not up to me, is it? We don't know, do we? It could happen at any time. I go around the graveyards and I look at all but the age groups. being 83 and having done a number of dangerous activities, uh, for instance, I'm in my third life. I'm in my uh, 13 near-death experiences. 13. Right. Um, the, thing, the thing is, Pat... Well, I, I'll let me just speak Pat, a little okay, bit. Okay, go ahead. I was um, uh, with a group of five other friends of mine uh, climbing up a mountain in Switzerland and we reached the top of the Matterhorn mm -hmm. which is 15 and over 15,000 feet Wow! and it, it, the Matterhorn is one of the most beautiful mountains in the world it stands I've by, always wanted to go there you know, you know the mountain? yeah it's a, it's a pyramidal peak beautiful it stands on its own mm -hmm. it's proud it's the most gorgeous mountain 
and we reached the top, we had our little uh, sandwich and we had a drink. And we then decided after half an hour to go down. About uh, 10 minutes later, John, my partner, my climbing partner, myself, uh, were a few feet down um, and we were trying to overtake three German climbers who were arguing between themselves. I'll cut the story short. Yeah. Um, and there was a bottom German standing uh, not on a ledge. He wanted to reach the ledge below him, about five foot below him, but he couldn't because the, they were arguing that the rope was too short. There was a middle guy that I was standing on the platform with him, mm -hmm. big fellow, mm -hmm. and there was a smaller guy sitting on a ledge uh, above me, directly above me, and next to John, my climbing partner. Mm -hmm. And um, I said to John, we're wasting time, we've got to catch the, the, the bus that takes us right down to the valley. And so he said, come on then, let's go. And so I said, all right, I'm going to climb down, keep climbing past these three Germans. So I started to turn around to put my foot down, vertical, vertical uh -huh. face to the mountain, right up like that. And I, th I heard something. Now, why did I hear something? Just a little something which was unusual. I looked up and I saw this German coming down head first. Oh no. He had just slipped his back backside off the ledge and he went forward like this. And it could have been that the rucksack he had low on his back had, had tipped him forward. And he literally did a forward somersault into my arms, about 50 foot from there to me and I was a big strong guy yeah I'm an old you man you still are you I'm still an are old man. you know I'm not not uh, capable of doing that uh. and I, I I just thrust my shoulder against the rock and I caught him wow and I really caught him but the trouble was as he sat in my arms whack, like that his head jerked right back hit the rock face knocked him out completely absolutely Cold, dead weight in cold, my arm. Yeah. I put him on the ledge there and then recovered and I was still standing up and the German, his partner, his climbing partner, um, Custon swore at me but it uh -huh. wasn't me Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he turned around and saw his partner on the, there and he looked up and he didn't know what had happened because he was facing out uh -huh. and well I caught him I saved his life. I saved the life of his two part You were in partners. the right place at the right time. I was. I saved my life. I saved yeah. John's life. Yeah. So I've lived. In God's grace. I've. That was the end of my first life and the start of my second life. Yeah. And then in, in 2005, I had a heart attack and bypass. That was the end of my second life and the start of my third life. Yeah. I'm now in and, my third life. And God spurred you and brought you through all of that because of his great grace. So all I'm saying is this. Pat, it's before you put your head in the pillow tonight, have a wee think about what I said to you today. It takes two minutes to get right with our Creator, to repent and put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Yeah. And the moment we do, we pass from eternal death to eternal life, into eternity. The moment we die, straight into the arms of Jesus Christ. Yeah, well I chat with my mum and dad every day. I posted 150 videos on YouTube. That's the story okay. of our life, I'm an author, and published a book, and, her, uh, and God used an unbeliever to put my story in a book to the world in Nashville, Tennessee, a woman who I told what I told you, and she said, I'm a ghostwriter, your story must go out there to the world. We spent two years in Skype, pouring my heart out, and she was in Nashville, Tennessee, typing. I never paid a penny for the book, I never paid a penny for the editorial fee. God used an unbeliever, I have to remember where I was for 22 years in bondage, and not be a, or otherwise I'd be a hypocrite. And his mercy, one way to grace it's called, because one way, when I was at the bottom of my pit, I had two words, one way. That came from John 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father except by me. No Jesus, no heaven. And the second one was, the unbelieving woman came back with two grace. I said, why? She said, David, you've had 13 near-death experiences or more, and it's God's grace. God's righteousness at Christ's expense, his unmerited favor that spurred this wretched sinner. Yeah. Tell me, you, this are is you the, attacked sometimes? We go through great things. Um, 
Would it be okay, Pat, if I shared this video on YouTube, on our channel, to encourage others? Would that be okay? Thank you. It's entirely up to you. Yes, certainly. It's, uh, it's up, to, well, up to you to, okay. to use I'll, the right way. Thank you. I'll just turn this